All right, so officially, let me welcome you, Jim. Thank you. Man. I hope everything is okay. Thank you. Everything is great. I'm having a great time so far. In Ghana? Always. No, it's not my first room. Yeah, I know, right? Mm. Reception is always good. Always beautiful. But why is it that most of the time when we speak with our brothers from Nigeria, they are like, okay, Ghana is more like a holiday destination for them. Why? They're speaking for themselves. Uh, it's, it's home for me. It's home? Yeah. Not, um, this is probably my fourth home. Mm. I'm yet to buy a house here, of course. But, so that's why I made it a fourth home. But it's, it's by all intents and purposes, it's fourth. Your fourth home? Yeah. I'm, so if we should work out a land for you, Quickly put up a house. My brother, one hand. Fast. One hand. <laughs> but, uh, we're, 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 yes. working on some, yes. we're working on something soon. Um, mm -hmm. I came in with a couple of business partners as okay. well. Okay, okay. So we're, um, I came in with my co-owner. I own a logistic company. My mm. co-owner was me. Mm. I also own a real estate company. Mm. And so my co-owner is here with me as well. Okay. So hopefully something should happen by December. Um, I have, um, two, I've had two business meetings with prominent men here that Great. are looking to partner with us. Great. By December, we should have something you know, culpable. Mm. Mm. So when people wonder, ah, so why is Jim rich? I mean, we all know knowledge people and how much they are paid. So, mm. I mean, we saw all those frenzy noise on social media about mm. somebody attacking you and mm. your source of wealth and everything. So it's more like they probably don't know that you have other businesses. No, they do. I think he just wants a little attention. <laughs> He's had a terrible run in his career, and uh, obviously this is the only way because I didn't fight that bottle. I just, I just put him physically where he should be. Mm. But the vocal part of it are people that came out to say yeah. that. I mean, uh, since I've, I've been doing this since I was barely twenty, so um, I imagine people will understand that I've made all the mistakes there is. I've suffered every scenario there is, and I'm, I'm perfected my game. Mm. There's no how you can question. Um, a 20 years existence in a space okay so um it doesn't matter and then of course he doesn't know my background enough to understand that i'm i'm vastly um literal you know economically that is my, the core of my training i have financial literacy wow. so while everybody is worrying about stuff i knew where to put my money in stocks and bonds and real estate and um in, in fleeting um, um, what you call ma markets, especially mm. in um, you know in all the, the circles, especially some of these um, online um, Business, uh, businesses uh, that are thriving yeah. um, um, you know, globally. I have um, strategy uh, managers, I have business mm. managers, I, I have four sisters that are totally groomed in the business world. I understand its dynamics. I have mm. brothers-in-laws, I have friends that that I've done this with over the years, and I have 10 years of feeling. Wow. So okay. You've learned on the job, you've Absolutely. learned from your mistakes, and yeah, you yeah, perfected it. You cannot feel for 10 years yeah. and not become wealthy. Mm. It's not possible. So he doesn't understand that. He, why didn't you come 10 years ago when nothing was happening? <laughs> now that it's all coming together, <laughs> he feels that I'm, mm. um, I don't deserve it, but yeah. I, it's not an overnight success. No. No, is it not a case that maybe um, some people feel that maybe we, I'm also in a filmmaker, so some people feel that maybe we filmmakers are not making enough money. No, we so, are. It's, I mean, it's founded on first class ignorance. Mm. There are people out there in the cinemas that are making 650 million naira wow. on release alone. Um, 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 Omo Ghetto yeah. has made over 650 million in the cinema. Oh, that movie is exciting. Okay, so then um, um, Netflix is. Is offering people deals between two fifty to one million dollars easily in two wow. installments, and they are picking it up. Wow. Um, they are different. It all adds up. By the time you've sold to every platform mm. on a very good film release, mm. you're making almost a million dollars. Do the exchange. That's half a billion half already. A billion. Yeah. So if you do two, three projects, proper projects, you are earning between the one point five to two billion mark if you actually do a very good project. You know, except you're an extremely foolish manager of money, you you will know where to throw in all that money and, and make your day. So but, what is it talking about? Yeah, because yeah. it's getting twenty thousand naira per row doesn't mean other people other are people suffering are the same suffering. fate. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, people call, my friend just caught an international deal. Back comment my movie is not yeah. even properly out of the cinemas. And I know deals are sitting on my table that I'm saying no to. Wow. I know, I know we just 
who were the first African films to be on the on the Times Square billboard. Wow. You know, I spent up to 180k putting it up. I understand the projection. You think poor, you live poor. Think so you, poor. You think you big, you live big. Uh, wow. So his his notion of the industry, uh, with all um, you know, all consideration for. I'm so happy you said you're a filmmaker. Mm. It, it's considerably poor. You know, yeah. filmmakers are some of the wealthiest people on earth. We make far more money than even musicians. Mm. The well-placed ones. Yeah. So what in the world is that gentleman talking about for somebody that's done this for almost that's 20 years? But, um, the, way, the way you you giving us an exposition on how much money you are making or Nigerian film is making, making me feel a bit more sad. <laughs> <laughs> because we are but, not... We're not even making a quarter of what you're Chris, saying. Fair, I guess your first thing, please. <laughs> Ola. Ola, listen, Ola. Um, but this is my projection. Yeah. My understanding is that they said get secondary incomes, mm. get uh, alternative incomes. Okay. What I've practiced all my life is every time I made money from, from these movies, mm. yeah, every time I made money from these films, I focus the income in investments. Mm. Okay. The hardest part for a capitalist, the hardest part for entrepreneurs is, found, is finding, you know, the, the principle, the, the money, the capital to invest in your dreams. Yeah. So we have the leg up. Mm. I already have access to bring in economically. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a working asset. Wow. And that's the part he doesn't understand. Mm. That what would take a refined, highly educated, with high potential investor to walk into a bank and get in a year i can get in one week wow it's simple i've worked hard all my life for this position and they didn't understand it isn't that isn't that just because you, you yeah because of, that's what i'm yeah. saying but it so may you, not apply to but that's the why rest. you're also ola mm. the, what would take a daniel years to find the ceo of a bank a well-established oap filmmaker famous person can call the ceo mm. Have an, a, 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 a dinner in his house mm. and get it first. I've never dealt with middlemen all my life. I've never dealt with even people with like the Hammer of Affairs all my life. Mm. I've always dealt with people that would tell me a final yes or no. That okay. makes me, that make me drastically different from you. Mm. Because a CEO, a founder, a chairman can tell me yes. And then the MD that doesn't even see any viability in my business has no choice but to do it. Yeah. You understand the difference? Yeah, yeah. And so I can access the biggest, highest doors. Mm. I can get a minister to say yes to my endeavor. Yeah, yeah. And I can't say yes to another person that's gone to Harvard for this. Okay, so he doesn't understand the implicity of the star power, of how to use it. I'm not, I've uh, never how to use your star uh, yeah, power. Yeah, I've never used work. it for fame or hang around or mm. try to belong to a clique or no. I forged the one thing I've invested more than myself, more than my resources, I invested in relationships. I've been traveling, I'll tell you something, when I was broke, I was traveling business class. Even when you were broke? When I was broke, all I was traveling business class. I would gather wow. every phone, I would walk for four or five months, gather my phones, go on holiday destinations that I know businessmen go, namely America. And, and 80% of the, of the relationship I cultivated them became 60% of my investors. Wow. Because I walk into business class, there's a CEO sitting next to me, he or she, there's a, there, there's a transformed baby <laughs> sitting next to me and, that's and, access and, to and phones. And they know you. They already know, know you, you by so virtue of what you what do. You do. They want to do business with you. Now, when they know you're already on the lane where they, they, they foster, a lane where they're familiar with, they're comfortable with, they will do it more out of sentimental favors and professional favors. So it is not really more like we sit here and we think that, oh, Nigerians are really supporting themselves. The businessmen in Nigeria are investing in film. It is about you, the individual. It's a very individualistic that, that make approach. Those approach. Yes. Ooh. It's not everybody that's, that's, that's doing it correct. So I will go there. I'll foster. I'll, they will invite me to their homes. I'll come for free. I will not charge. You know, you're going the, to their homes. Yeah, charge. for you, I will not charge. I will go to their homes for the occasions, for their birthdays, oh, for okay. the occasions. They will invite me. I will mm. not charge. So I even fly with my resources there. I have already made a mark with you. I have defined my place with you. Mm. The day I bring a proposal to your table, the narration is already one-sided. Yeah, that you are the one that owe favors, and you give me that favor. Mm. 
Okay. Did, did, did you get really affected by COVID? I no, mean, I the Nigerian cinema before yourself. I made a lot of money in COVID. What are you guys talking about? So Everybody for you, talking? there was no, no COVID. No, there was none. Let it me, was business as usual. Let, let me let me explain. I was caught. I was just leaving America mm. when um, COVID shut down like three or four countries. Mm. You understand? And um, I was I was wondering. Um, I was wondering what is what is going on. I mean, it's easy to find this one of the most uncertain terms of our time. Mm. I was with my son. He just wanted to hang out. He was doing great. I just wanted to hang out with him in um, in in Paris, in, okay. um, uh, in Disney World Paris. And then the war shut down. I couldn't. We couldn't go back to America. We couldn't go back to 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 um, to where he got to London. I was stuck in Paris. He's never been to Nigeria, so I was thinking, okay, the next place is to take him to Nigeria. Okay. Everywhere shut down. So we spent six months in Paris. Mm. Now in those six months. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was near depression because I've never stood still in my life. My mind is constantly on the moon, constantly moving. But, you know, he, he, but I've never also spent that amount of time with him in okay. one space. Okay. I'm not talking nannies. I'm not talking his mother being there. I'm not talking his aunties. There's the two, just of you. two of us surviving as mm. two, two men, men from different generations. <laughs> he taught me more about myself than I could possibly know. And wow. taught me more about him wow. as an individual. As a thinking, living being that I could have possibly known. Mm. I wrote a book in that time. It's called Within Gifting the, the Odds. Just called a deal with Amazon with that book. Um, in What's that title again? Gifting the Odds. Okay. I'll show it to you. All right. You know, it is it's there, and um, we're, that's what we're supposed to, you know, promote it with a film. But we were afraid that the, the managers yeah. thought this film would probably eclipse. Um, that, yeah, that yeah, PR. Yeah. So let's leave it. We start promotion from end of November. Okay. So we did that. My forex training came into full effect. I sought out my friends in America and in, that wanted to move funds from the U.S. to Nigeria because everybody was afraid at that time. <laughs> Even me was looking for how, you know, like, oh, man, Charlie, this thing is getting out of hand. <laughs> Let me position small money where yeah. I was, you know. And I had friends in Nigeria trying to move money out of Nigeria as well. Wow. It became a business. We set up a team. I was here. Somebody was in Ibadan. Someone was in Lagos. Another person was in Abuja. Another person was in America. Every day we do, I would do four hours. My boy would wake me up. He became my PA. Mm. He would wake me up. In the, I, I usually write at night. I let him watch all the cartoon networks mm. and everything. <laughs> Before he goes to bed, he wakes me up. I start yeah. working. Okay. So Because in the morning, he hangs out with his friends and make all the noise. So that time, I'm in my office reading. Trading. And I got this team together, mm. and we pretty much were seeing anybody that want to move money, talk to us. And my brother, we moved. You come to the boss. We moved. The boss moved money. We moved money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, when four months the pandemic was over, I didn't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're moving money, we were moving. And then, so, then yeah, you. It, it was, was when everything stopped. Business. They were like, "I, Jimmy, can go home now. We're not giving you. <laughs> we have nothing more to give you. You know." Neat. So I mean, money. in every situation, <laughs> yeah. I think it's a whole different skill yeah. set to understand the opportunities there mm. and do the needful. And I will tell you another thing why there's a big misnomer, especially okay. in the real reference to this gentleman. Yeah. I've never made a big bone of living in the public. Mm. I don't. I, I, I exist in three different lifestyles. Okay. I exist in the public space, the private space, the secret space. It's a secret the public, space. Yeah, the public space is you and I, yeah. everything we give to them, our fashion, our lifestyle, our thoughts and, and, and spoken words on different narratives on earth that they wish us to say something about because we pivot conversations pretty much. Mm. My private spaces are my business associates, my extended family, my friends, yeah. everybody that exists in that space. I know me personally that I work every day of my life to live up to their standards. Mm. The third space exists not even for extended. It doesn't exist for my sisters exist for my sons for me for for whomever I choose that's the place partner. of secret that is the place where you are your best that is where you thrive the secret place if it's not in place cannot foster a good relationship in the private place okay you won't be able to thrive there as a businessman you won't be able to thrive there as a mentor you won't be able to thrive there as a leader or a follower and finally that is the if you're fulfilled in that private space mm. that is what makes you a champion in the public space Wow. Because you can stand your ground mm. on your lifestyle. You will not cater to the public opinion. You will not cater to people's opinion like this. 
and people will fear you mm. and respect you because they always respect and fear the unknown. They don't know enough about you to form a judgment. If, they don't know about you to attack. Mm. What will you, how will you attack what you don't know? Mm. So you understand, this is how I coexist in all of these realms. And so for him, he is seeing me in the public space pretty much all his life. He doesn't understand, he doesn't how, understand how I thrive in the yeah, private yeah. And, yeah. In, and the secret Spaces. space. Mm. So it is, he, he, he has said it purely it out of his depth of knowledge. Okay. You understand? And nothing mm. more. So I cannot, I cannot you know, get angry. He's not there in my private space when I attend symposiums. Mm. When I attend private training, when I sit with mentors, he has no idea. He has no idea. Mm. He, do, he doesn't know what happens to me in five years when I go away from the industry. Mm. He doesn't know what I've taken a hiatus three times. I've taken a hiatus six years. Mm. I took a hiatus three years. This recent hiatus was five years. Wow. So if you don't know what I'm doing in five years, all of a sudden you make a bone of saying, oh, he drives around with all these cars, he has these homes, he lives the same lifestyle. Do you know what I was doing in five years? No. So if he says ritual, my brother, it took a long time to do a five-year ritual. <laughs> if I did five-year ritual to come back to this lifestyle, then I do deserve whatever is coming to me, my brother. <laughs> a five-year ritual, Charlie, is not a joke, as you know. We are, I was here for your name, Jimai. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a well-established an actor already. And then, Obi, I will share Nigerian movies with you. And I'm a friend. Most uh, ladies that saw the flyer said, hey, I'm going to have a chat with a bad boy. I was like, why do you call him bad boy? <laughs> I don't know. But somebody wants me to ask if you're married. Um, I'm divorced. Um, I was married to a wonderful person. Mm. She's, she's white. And Your wife was white? Yes. Okay. Yes. No, I believe in all that interracial, yeah. you know, cultural melting yeah. point of the world. You were Kwame Nkrumah, I guess. Yeah. Kwame Nkrumah married and you yeah, changed yeah, yeah. I hear that brother kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I hear that brother like that across the pond. Yeah, man. You know, all power to Kwame for sure. Does the way. So, yeah, like Kwame will love you, man. Yeah, you're so, a bad boy. Yeah, no, no, that, dude, man. man. For real, man. That means Kwame's a bad boy too. Yeah, bro. he was a bad boy. Man, we love him bad. Yeah, we bro. love him. We no, love him true. bad. So, anyways, um, I hooked up, and you know, hmm. it was really founded on mutual respect, love. Um, yeah. but there are certain considerations hmm. around that time. I I just lost my mom. Um. My mom happened to be my best friend and you know, my business partner by all intents and purposes. And, and then, you know, she was also a great businesswoman. So yeah. there are, these things, I didn't find my feet for a while because, you know, I did the African phenomenon where I had to be strong and not show emotion mm. all through. And you know that we're the ones that suffer most. That's true. Yes, and they have no, no idea. Yes, at the end. The, the women cry. The, the, they get on with the, I, they know the whole philosophy of venting, mm. of releasing that energy of hurt. We pack it in and act like Superman. We and box then it out. We, 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 we box it out. <laughs> and at the end of the day, we get boxed in. <laughs> you know, so that's what happened to me. And I didn't have anything to give emotionally mm. and I was drained. And, you know, so I, I took full responsibility for that, for, feeling. for that feeling. Yes. And then at the end of the day, um, the kind of presence of mind that she possessed, you know, she quickly forgave. We mm. came back to the table. And said, we brought a wonderful gift to the world. I have a son. You okay, you had, you had one we child. Have a son, yeah, yeah. Have. So we, we decided, let's, let's, let's make it happen. Mm. Mm. Let's, take it to, let's prove to mm. ourselves. It's never been about the word. The reason nobody heard about it is because I exist in this realm yeah. I told you about. Yeah. Nobody had access to that realm. Nobody can. You know how people spend resources mm -hmm. to be seen and heard? I spend resources not to be seen. That is an advice. That is. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. Different you spend levels. resources not to be seen and heard. My first level, mm. I was open out. I existed in the white hot space. That's mm. the white hot space where the hottest musicians, actors, sculptors, anybody that's a creative exists there. Okay. You can't inhabit that space for too long. Okay. Or you'll be found you'll wanting. You'll be found wanting. Yeah. yeah. So you have to exist it every time. Mm. It's mm. your next album, your next film, your next work that would define your place in that entity. But that time you're hot, everybody want a picture, everybody saying he's the baddest, the coolest, the person don't get comfortable. Mm. The first place where dreams and visions go to die is the comfort zone. Mm. And that place informs comfort. You leave it. I left, I stayed there too long. I stayed there too long. In the comfort zone. I was there too long. Mm. When I discovered myself and I existed that space, I moved on. The next um, space was where I started to understand this business. 
that was where I did all my feeling. I failed back to back for three years. Three years. Everything I put my hands in was not working. Everything I tried to raise was not working. Every time it worked, and I had to move on because I, I'm not a good gatekeeper. Mm. I'm great at opening doors. As a matter of fact, I'm genius at opening doors. But I don't know how to man the gate because what, my what mind kind of, is nimble. I have to be. What kind of doors are we talking about? Every I mean, door, my brother. Every door. Both physical and mental and spiritual. Define it anyhow you like. And gender I just doors. open doors. And gender doors, my brother. <laughs> I just open doors, my brother. But I don't know how to keep the doors open. <laughs> you yeah. open and you leave. Bro. I just open, <laughs> my brother. Eh? Define it anywhere you can. So, anyway, <laughs> anyway. Oh, he's about like, to ask. This online is the problem. Bro. Oh, you were about. When you're talking serious, is online. You're just defying me. Can you just stick to the subject okay. matter? Like, okay, let's go. Back you're to a the serious subject. man. Stop yeah. doing this. Okay. Thing. I'm sorry. But about yes, that. I open yes. doors. You open brother. doors. Yeah. So, <laughs> at the end of the day, I understood how to open the door. Mm. But then finding people that would man the door yeah was a problem i always found people that had paper qualification but had far less passion than i did you know the mm. passion that you do this with they put somebody behind it you never be the same no matter how gifted passion is everything in this life so the passion of knowing i use my money that i want this to succeed i work day and night compete with anybody in every room i walk into i've always seen more gifted people than me mm. every room i walk into i've always seen I better trained people than me. But I'll tell you what I've never seen in a room. Somebody that will outwork me. Work harder than all. I've never seen anybody that will outwork me. You have to be on self-slavery to outwork me. Because I'll wake up 5 a.m. if need be. Mm. I will do what it takes. I'll, I've done the 24-hour run on a business chase mm. that didn't get me to sleep for 48 hours till I got it. Wow. And most times I do, I don't even get it. So but it is not. It, it is not all you know. All, no, all, all it's not glamour. That's what y'all yeah. done on the. That's what You've a lot been of people through the hassle. I've been no. So the failing. I went back to. I remember one time. I went back to my father. Is, that, is this a spiritual thing? Mm. The, I was going to ask you that. The last one I put in. No, Miss Norma. That's the African context. Mm. We built this narrative from the beginning of our blueprint, where they've embedded it in us and mismanaged. Our brain. That's why it looks like these white folks are succeeding more than because of the way they were raised. And that's why I decided my generation will be raised differently. If you speak to my son, it's different. All languages, keen, curious, understanding of even the ways of life, far ahead of everybody. Mm. He's barely seven. He will read you before you sit down. Wow. I taught him that. Mm. I had to. I had to prepare him for things that filled me. So my narrative was in the beginning was a religious narrative mostly. I was told that. I have to pray till my head hurt. Mm. I have to pray upside down sometimes and call this God. What are you? What are you? What's that kind of analogy me for? Mm. Every time something went wrong in my life, there's an uncle chasing me from the village, or somebody has projected something that is wrong. Okay. Every time my business, I didn't wake up in the morning to force a relation. Every time I burnt a bridge, I didn't chase people I'm supposed to chase to get narratives from me. I used my personal money instead of going to institution that was funded for it, mm. and I put in my money and I brought friends instead of people that want to be loyal to me as Jim Mike. I'll go and bring an all that is close to me. Mm. And when the business feel, it's a game of sentiment. Yeah. I could have been less sentimental and brought somebody from the street to run my business. Someone that would jump when I say so and mm. ask how high. Mm. And want to do it because he wants to leave. Mm. Not somebody that would get away from it. When I tell you, you stole my money, go and call my mother to beg. You know? So that was, they were the mistakes. There was nobody chasing me from my village. There was no the uncle that was states. projecting uh, no hocus pocus on, on my behind. Mm. I sat down, understood it, spoke to my dad, and my dad told me that there's not. From day one, you were positioned for certain things. You were positioned to be great. Wake up in the morning and start recognizing who you are. Mm. They are sheep and they are lions. I've been born and raised a lion. There's no other way. I, every time I try to play like a sheep, I undermine myself. So I wake up in the morning, stand in front of a mirror, remind me who I am, then I'll mm. go out. You go out and, and things you started win. changing. Yeah. And it kept changing and changing. And every time it changed, I'll, I'll up the game. Every time it changed, I'll up the game. Does it mean you are not a religious person? I am extremely religious. But this time, there's a different prayer. Mm. There's a prayer pray to God, and he won't answer you because he don't understand you or your power. Okay. My prayer became shorter. My mm. actions became longer. Mm. As opposed to my prayer being longer, my actions short. Most Christians do. That's that's most Christians do. Since I wake up and I say, God, you've gifted me. You know, and I'm 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 short of morals. Make me better there. Mm. But I'm gonna go out there. I want to thank you for get bringing this thing home. 
as opposed to bless what I'm going to do. I hope the other person sees one. God blesses them. No, 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 no. My narrative is I've brought it home, spoken it into existence. I've seen it. I've taken the future. It's just a process of walking to it that I just have to do. And so every time he failed, I'll come back. Instead of the self-blame and finger-pointing, I will look at my and say, what is, is wrong here and there? I'm not saying spiritually certain things don't exist in the African context. You understand what I'm I saying? Do. But I also understand that my Adam believe, my belief in God has protected me. I mean, how can it be possible that I protect myself? Don't mm. you even understand it? I'm crazy. Yeah. I've jumped mountains, I've jumped from bridges, I've, I've done everything I can to, to end my life. When has been the longest because period or time that a Jamaica has prayed to God? Two hours. You've done two hours prayer? Yeah, I've done two hours. When I was trying to find strength after I lost my mom, I sat down and I had a long conversation with God that, well, how am I supposed to carry on from now? I mean, what is next for me? Mm. You know, and it happened at a time where I feel I've achieved a lot already. Ooh, so what is next? Should I just retire, take my little money, mm. invest it properly, look after my child, find a woman that loves me for me, mm. and just get on with this thing called living? Or is there more for me to do? Is there something else you want out there for me? What else is there? Because I think you've given me everything far too young, and there's nothing. I don't feel there's anything else I owe anybody. Mm. Where you have a problem is where you feel you have to subscribe and ascend to people's expectations of you all the time. Mm. Every goal I've set for myself was informed by me, not by how well Allah is doing or how well Fred is doing. Mm. I'm deaf, blind, and mute to what other people are doing. Every lane that people try to get onto for competition with others is clogged with traffic. Mm. The only lane that is traffic-free is your lane. your lane. I've stayed on my lane all through. That's why it took me a longer, more arduous road to get there. But now that I've possessed it, Mm. I'm a master of this lane. You can't come into this lane and tell me nothing. Because I'm a master of, of the game. Yeah. Okay? So I, I, I choose and pick what will succeed for me. Because I know that you are random picking everything that society expects you to succeed of. I choose. That's why whenever I make a choice, it succeeds. Because I've analyzed it. It is meant for me, not for anyone else. I chose Accra for premium to succeed. Mm. I choose this. It was, you won't force me to go to South Africa and do a premium. I'll refuse. No matter how well set up it is. If it's not if going it's with not, my instinct. Okay. One of the things I'm trying to say is that your instinct, your you'll instinct. be so informed and you've honed your instincts to a point, you don't need any expert to tell you where you'll go. So, so when, when you choose a place, maybe you choose Ghana to premiere a movie and your instinct tells you to come to Ghana, when you know that the Ghanaian cinema industry is down, won't you think twice? But we had a crowd it? there. Doesn't the, the day of the premiere, there was yeah. a crowd. Doesn't that define that it is not about the normal human statistics? Mm. Your projection humanly mm. is that the industry is down. Mm. My projection is that I found love in this land anytime I come. Mm. All I need to do is filter into it. And into what I want, I desire, will happen. And then what was my mental, spiritual preparation before I came before here? Coming. I saw the end. Book it into existence day in, day out. On the plane, in a 45-minute flight, I went to the bathroom three times to say, this is my desire before I land in this land. I need possession. I need to conquer it. I need to live this dream. I need to prove to somebody else that what I've done in six cities in my country can be done in a foreign land. Mm. So three times, I said it, and I came down. And by the time I touched down here, you can't tell me nothing. If I walked into that place, I saw two people. I've lived my dream. That's how, that's the difference between you and I. Yeah. I will, why, why I'll, I'll feel disappointed. Yeah, I will not be disappointed. Those two, God sent them. I swear, among those two, one of them will offer me a deal that will cover what I expected in the multitude. You're I promise look, you. You're always looking at the positive. I've never done, I don't do regrets in my life. I don't understand what it means. You, don't, regret, you don't understand regret. I've lived my life in regret the first 30 years of my existence on earth. Mm. Everything I didn't do wrong, uh, every relationship I messed up, I regret. Every family member that that didn't, I didn't live up to their standards, I regret. Every time my dad spoke to me a certain way, I said, oh, is this man looking at me like, is he wishing he had more sons? I'm mm. his only son. Okay. I regret. Every time that the, the mother of my child says something that wasn't on towards me, oh, look at what this other person, I regret. Nah. So when we are here and scared of um, shooting and taking them to the cinema, because we think the cinema culture is down, you didn't see it that way? I didn't see it that way. That film is there. 
it's going to be one of the highest grossing Nollywood film in that cinema. Mm. It's going to happen like that. Because you believe so? Because I know so. You know so? Mm -hmm. Based on no statistics? That, that I don't need statistics. Tell me who has ever changed the world based on statistics. At the cops of every event, every change in the world, mm. people that changed the world always did it when the statistics were down, when nobody believed. Every Kanye West, every Steve Jobs, every Donatola, every, every uh, you, you know, um, um, Michael D'Angelo, they always mm. did something at the cops of when there was no belief. No. You know, but they believed. They saw the future. They spoke it into existence. I, I crossed my budget five times. Mm. For bad comment. At the fourth crossing, um, something strange happened that mm. made me have the conviction of what I am. Mm. Okay? Mm. Um, I invested, our real estate deal just cashed out. That was what gave me the impetus to move because we sold it out in no time. So we're on the next move. I didn't know my partners, mm. God forgive me, I'm saying this on National Media, they connived against me. Ooh. Because they felt that, okay, um, let's filter this money immediately into the next project. My thought was that as CEO and you know, majority shareholder, money will be shared. Mm. I'll take mine and go and do what I want, which is invest in my passion project. That is what they thought. This film thing is his passion project. Yeah. So they stifled funds from me. Oh. They didn't sign into being our agreement. I didn't have liquids to push my agenda. And I just sat down there. Do you know all that time, I told them to keep shooting. I was, told them. Was you going through the turmoil with them? Day, and I was, don't forget, I'm lead actor. Mm. So I'm expected to come and perform every day. It's, yes, it's it's, yes. Yeah, it's going to be but affected. I didn't sleep for five days. I promise you. I probably slept less than six hours in those five days. Mm. Every night, I'll sit up and be wondering what's going on. So this is the shame coming. I'm going, probably it's going to stop. And people won't understand that it's not as if I don't have money. It's just that there's a conspiracy against them. And mm. you know what? I never, I didn't bear any grudge against them because they thought they were acting in my best interest. They just thought this guy is throwing money, money down yeah. the drain. That, so they, they did it as an intervention. Because these guys, one is my brother-in-law, the other one is a very close friend. So these were not enemies. Mm. These were just people that were like, oh, wait, he moved 50 million. Oh, wait, he moved another 80 million. In films, seriously? Because their thoughts was like, I film suppose 40 million. You understand yeah. me? So maybe we better stop this guy before mm. he bankrupts himself. Mm. So, so they were acting in your best interest. On my best interest. But you were acting on but, your But me, your me, five years ago would have gone to war. With them? Yes. And my war, my brother, doesn't end well for the person. Because I would have cut everybody off, mm. disassociated myself, moved lawyers. Man, I would have destroyed that company. Wow. For, because of anger. Every time I act with emotion, mm. I have always considered myself above um, average intelligence. I've always said that I set precedences. Every time I do something mediocre, it's always because my emotion took the better. So those five days wasn't fear. It was telling my emotion to behave. Mm. That's all. I needed to control myself. So every time the anger came, the dispassion came, the disappointment came, even a few tears. Mm. Yes, I, I'm not, I'm, I cried the third day. Like, the book you wrote, oh. is it about your challenges? It's and... about everything in life. Mm. It's a 31 series on self-development. We discuss every subject under the sun, how to deal with disappointment. Mm. So this is me. I wrote a book about disappointment, and I'm about to disappoint myself. So after the fourth day, I took control of my emotion. The fifth day, I called. And I said, let's do a video call. We did, I wanted to see their face and said. I founded this company. Mm. You guys will not release money. They said, no, we feel that we should move on to our next project. I thanked them. That is for the best interest of the company. And I called the phone. And they were scared shitless. Because they thought that this guy is about to do something dangerous. I left them. I went back to my company and I said, what is going on? 40% of my cast, the camp, asked. 40% of them left. They, I they lost left my. The they left the set and said, "Oh, okay, it's not coming through with money anymore." Da da da. da. Oh, we're seeing a big cars all over the place. That we hear there's the money. I left. Nobody, even my sister, that was the accountant, said, "Is there a problem?" I said, "No." Okay, so that means on set you ran out of cash. Yes. And they decided to leave. Yes. A lot no of them left. No, they, they, I didn't. They didn't even know there was out of. They just said renew our contract. Mm. I said no. 
It wasn't. They didn't even think it was about money. They just, they just, you know, sus, suspected. Sus, sus, suspected. That it's going to be about money. Yeah. And maybe you because when you fight. stop doling out the money, people stop find, finding favors with yeah. you. Yeah. So when it happened, my own sister said, "How come I'm not getting inflows mm. to deal with certain things?" I said, "You know what? I made a mistake. I shifted money a bit. Money is coming." My belief was that I said Monday. I told everybody Monday. And you see, when you make pro promises, be careful. Hmm. Never make promises out of a out place of, of yeah. you know, faith or pressure. I told them Monday, this deal was going to go through. Hmm. On Saturday, I got a call. Okay? I went to a meeting. Now, that call was wrong. The call you had on yes, Saturday? Yes, it was a call I didn't want to go. Hmm. Because it's somebody I did business with in America that felt, because then it was bigger than me, I mean, financially and otherwise, it took that deal from me. Oh. I set up that deal. I, f I brought this person in from Nigeria. He's a Nigerian billionaire. I don't want to call his name. I brought him in. I was very close friends with 50 Cent. You were close to yes. friends um, 50 there was, Cent? Yes. There was, there, was, um, there was a deal for FM Vodka. If I say much, they will know who I am. So anyway, there was a deal. I was going to bring him in to wanted to buy FM Vodka Africa. So I set up the deal. I had a certain amount I was told to. I said I had, I had half. I told this guy, this chairman, come. Come do this. Share my sticks with me. Mm. And he came. And then because then, that's one another thing I told you about leaving things in the hands of people you don't. Yeah. So I left it in his hands with his lawyers to him. And the other day, I got papers with a far lesser stick mm. than we else agreed. And I said, my brother, what is this? He said, oh, because he's bringing I said, are you crazy? I brought this money. I brought, would you be in this land talking to him if, if I didn't say for me? And they took it off my feet, so I destroyed it. Oh. Uh, from the top. That's another thing I love about him. He doesn't tolerate this law. I called him and said, see what's going to happen. He said, no, what, Jim? This deal is not happening. And we struck it. So this guy felt humiliated. He felt bad because it was them having meetings behind my back. I would call this guy, where are you? I was in Atlanta. He was in New York, sitting in there, you know, sitting with them. He didn't know they were bringing reports <laughs> back to me. His lawyer is Mike. He's a Jewish guy, very straightforward guy. They would come and say, do you know your guy is here? Just to protect my guy. I say, yeah, mm. I know he's here. I call my guy. My guy will tell me, oh, he's in Atlanta. I said, hmm, <laughs> you don't know, know I know. 55-year-old man be lying this kind of chip. I left him. Anyway, at the end of the day, because I didn't call him out, the president hear about it, I didn't go to the internet and start doing all this little boyish thing. Mm. I just left. He died a natural death. So naturally, he didn't sleep well. Because there's some people that like this trouble. They thrive in this space. I don't have time. I moved on. But he didn't sleep well for a long time. Mm. So he called me and said, I have a deal. And I said, no, I can't do business with you because you're so... He yeah. said, I have a deal. See me. He set up the meeting at night. When I looked at my circumstances and looked at how long it took this guy to call me, I mm. knew he was the one that would solve my problem. Another thing is discernity. I went to the meeting. By Monday, I had funds in excess of five times to finish it. Wow. Because it was a quick one. They just needed an introduction. And it happened to be somebody that was dear to me, a minister that was more like a godfather. And they've tried with all his power and his clout. Apparently, he wasn't sitting well with the recent power that be, the recent mm. party. Mm. He's a very powerful man, but he went to a different party. Okay, so it doesn't belong to the party. It doesn't belong power. to the new party, so they cut him off completely. Okay. And this guy is a chieftain of this new party, this APC that is there mm. now. So he couldn't have access. And this was a deal of 24 hours window. Wow. Or they would have gone to somebody that would take them to him. So you remember he's always seen pictures. Somebody called him and said, hey, Jim, Jim is like a son to this guy. Mm. They called me. I said, I don't want to. And he, he laid the deal. And this time I walked in there and said, I want 60%. I want it on Wait. paper. And because of the fact, he said, no. The, I knew he fought behind the scene, but he was always smiling in my face. <laughs> you can't he trace, signed it. You can't trace every he smile. He signed it. Me. And I did better than that. I took them to his home. We mm. all had lunch. We finished it. And right there, I also got a cut from the other end as well. And you know what? He said he didn't even want it. They should give it to him because he knew what I was going through yeah. too. They should give it to his. So I took both ways. People watching you and listening to you are all amazed. You know why? You are more like a motivational speaker. You know? So They're I, learning a lot I, from you. Yeah, I, I took it. And by Monday, I came back. Even my sister. But when the film was done, I sat them down, two of them, mm. and said, this is what I went through. And they just, but they're used to me handling things like that. But that was to teach them that you don't come and complain and moan about your circumstances. God always provides a way. But the Ooh, thing is that you see it that way, that you're, you're born and designed to resolve problems. Mm. 
You know, it's not, it's not a problem, it's, except you see it as a problem. I never thought it was a problem. All this time, everything I was thinking was in fear. Mm. Because once you buy into the narrative of fear, you fail. I wasn't looking at fear and anxiety. My problem was how to control my emotion mm. so that I don't, I don't do something that will hurt me. But let me ask you, what is fear to you? How, do, how would you, Jemai, define fear? Fear has never been existent in my life. The so last time regret, I had fear. You, you said regret is not in your It's books, not in my dictionary. And fear now is fear too isn't in your dictionary. I'll tell you how far I deal with fear. The last time I had fear, after I had my son, my, my sisters called me to a meeting. Then we know we lost our mom and they said, you have to stop this crazy thing you do. You know, I climb mountains and I jump off. I jump from airplanes. I do bungee. So they say, listen. I don't understand anybody that's tried so hard to kill themselves like you. You need to stop. <laughs> you know, you, are, you know, you have a son now. You know, if you if you don't want to leave for us, leave for him. <laughs> what would tell me? Where did you get these things from? Our father is the safest driver in the world. We sit in the car, we are abusing him at the bala. He's oh my, we're going to get you in ten years. You know. So where did he get it from? I got it from my mom though. My mm. mom was a cowboy man. Okay. You know, she was she was the, the you know the heart of lion. You know, but she married the perfect man. Person that plays it safe. <laughs> my dad is a safe player. He's like he's that guy that calculates. My dad is a scientist of calculation. He will calculate to take ten steps to get to this place. <laughs> if you do eleven steps, you miss your mark. My mom will probably calculate forty steps and cross it and then jog backwards. So that's that's the narrative. And I sat him down and I explained to them that you don't give in to fear. Mm. So I had fear then. They spoke to me and spoke to me as and being a new found father, mm. I started doing something. I start my crazy investments. Like, you bring a portfolio to me, I'll invest in it. We'll lose money, I'll be the first laughing. Like, ah, shit, okay, let's do it again. Wow. So, I've never, I've never, so they said, no, stop the crazy financial antics. Mm. You need to play safe, you need to do trust funds now, you need to do closed accounts, you need to, you know, build, focus on the real estate, let's build it now. Mm. There's a legacy that must be done. Mm. That was fear. Okay. That was fear. And then they, 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 they also started talking, oh, you can, do you know the kind of thrill I get from my airplane jumps, those my days? It tells me I'm, I'm, I'm a God. Mm. It tells me that I'm, I'm fearless. Like yeah, that's what God designed you to think. So, so when that thing happened, for two years, I didn't take any risk. No financial risk. I got this little suburban home that I'll go in there, you know, you know with the daddy t-shirts. I grew a nice pot belly. I wasn't walking out like that anymore. I was looking absurd. And then one day I woke up and I said, I have to do something dangerous. <laughs> I'm, no, somebody, you know? Sorry for that. Somebody just said, I, I don't read their comments. I should read their comments and their questions too. Yeah, I'll yeah. try and do that. Now, um, um, Noni Koliki, that nice combination. Calm dad, high boy mom. Yes. That's that. Calm that, dad, that's it. That's, high boy mom. That's how it works. <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah. Anyway, so I'll try and read some of your messages for him. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. I'm, yeah, accusing me. So, like, please read our messages. Read them. <laughs> okay, track. let me finish the narrative. Then we'll yes, then we will, I'll come to you. Yeah. So, let, so, let's finish the narrative of yeah. um, so fear. I woke up one morning mm. and I, Zambia, they invited me for this event in Zambia. So, when I got there, I tricked the crew. I told them that, hey, let's go to, you know, there's this place where Livingstone, that's mm. where the, the highest budget jumping is. Apparently, their king, forgive me, your majesty, you know, you know, I'm your son. Anyway, their king jumped that place Ooh, and shit his pants. He like did what? Yeah, that place was. <laughs> <laughs> so, Will Smith, yeah, Will Smith went there and jumped and pissed his pants. And it was like, it was like screaming like a little girl. No, Will took it like an actor. But... So, I said, oh my God, what will I do? So, I said, I'm going to jump there. This week. Kill everything. Now, mm. for some people, it's nothing. Maybe they will hear a word or read a book or watch something. They will have themselves. But me, I have to do something extreme. That's mm. the only way that will kill me. Mm. I did, that's the, so I went there. So I told them I wanted to sightsee. I wanted to see the Victoria Force. So they, well, all that they had gays, they flew down there with me. Early in the morning, mm -hmm. I didn't eat. This place is so bad that when you get there, they will make you sign a paper to say that if anything goes wrong and you die, you're on your own. It's for thrill stickers all over the world. So apparently, there's a river down there that's got crocodiles. Mm. You know? So, and a week before then, there's no, a the, sweet. The river is down. Yeah, with a cro cliff. Yeah, so yeah. If you don't jump well, you if, go to. Yeah, you go to the river. That's the cushion. But it, it's, it's a still water. So there are crocodiles nesting in the sun just a few meters away. And you don't know how fast those suckers swim. They'll get to you before you get out. 
So basically, there was a, a Swedish lady one week before then that the ropes broke. <laughs> so all my narratives were not going well. So you will sign that if anything goes wrong. So while I was signing, I had somebody video it. I told them that, listen, if I don't make this jump and I fall into that river, they should understand how much they love me in Nigeria. There will be war. They will come and clean up that country. All the commandos in Nigeria come for them. So they should better think twice about killing me. Everybody there better be praying that I make this jump. <laughs> I signed it. So it was while I was up there, I didn't know somebody called the national TV. Oh. So you can imagine my crew in the hotel having breakfast. And yeah. they were watching like, oh, Jimmy Sabat. <laughs> oh, my God. So they went crazy and started driving to the, to, to to the, the place. Location. Yeah. It's on my, if you go to my IG page, okay. you see I shared it there. Mm. So I jumped. I jumped 313 Feet? meters. Okay, meters. Upside down. Wow. To, to prove to myself that I've forgotten myself. So when I came down, when I jumped it, I was dangling. Everybody was like, I was screaming like, you know, like <laughs> having a good time, you know. And when they brought me back up, I just understood that this is, this is, I can't run away from who I am. This is, this is who I am. You know, the, the more you try to become something else, the more you lose yourself. Yeah. This is who I am. I can't, I should stop it. This is who my son will love me for. This is who anybody that will love me will love me for. I can't be anybody else. I will, you know, so that's it. So all these qualities that you have, all these, you know, these adventures that you've gone through, has it been influenced by your passion for film? Um, not, not in the exact opposite mm. way. It's not a direct, you know. There was no result direct of, influence. It was mm -mm, just mm -mm. your upbringing it, it, yourself. It, it's just, it's just always been, um, you know, how I find. You know, when I went on that path of self-discovery, mm. and I discovered certain things that scared me, that exhilarated me, that also disappointed me about myself. Mm. So I said, let me walk ground up. The things that disappoint me about myself, I will build. I will okay. change. I will reinstate. The things that exhilarated me about myself, I'll curb it. Because those were the dangerous things, like I want to get a car and drive on the autobahn at 200 kilometers per hour. I have to be part now. So I have to curb, know how to manage my excitement. Then the things that exalted me about myself, I will amplify. Mm. Things like creating the best films, things like being a better businessman, a better leader, a better follower. I've never followed anything in my life. And that's where I, that's one skill set I lacked drastically. To be a good leader, you must be a good follower. I've mm. never followed anybody. So I started to seek out mentors, seek out people that were better at me at this, mm. people that, that had done it under great duress and succeeded from it. And I started following them. Physically, directly, or indirectly. Who would say or have a cheap punk? Needs FM.